Welcome back to Blender 3.3. Today we create this low poly shelf that is useful for game assets and virtual reality applications. Okay, let's get started. I have a standard scene here in Blender. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to scale this plane on X down to a quarter so we have something that looks like the surface of a shelf. We go to edit mode. We are in face mode. Oh, I'm switching to face mode. And I'm going to extrude that by 0 0.05, 4 or 5 centimeters to get a, something that looks like a shell. Going to duplicate that, grab it, move it along set up by a meter. I duplicate that once again. I grab it with a set axis by half a meter. I duplicate that one more time, move it up the Z or the Z axis half a meter. And now I have four of them. And now I want to add a pole because they're not floating in midair. I need something to connect them. I want to uh, obviously reduce the size here, but first I want to reduce the number of vertices here to keep the geometry nice and low. And I'm thinking about something, not 32, but maybe 24. I don't want to get too low, otherwise it gets too edgy. I'm also scaling it down, so it's probably more forgiving. So I'm scaling this on x 0.0. .0. Five, make it very thin and I scale it one more time on Y same 0 0.05 to get this nice pole here then in side view I'm going to grab it move it on the Z axis and have a really close look on the Z axis and just bring it down a little bit I'm going to the top view and I'm going to kind of make it all visible. I grab that and I pack it in the corner just by roughly eyeballing it for the purpose. Okay, so we have one pole sitting in the corner. I want to have in edit mode, I want to also change the length of this leg and make it a little bit more shallow, so I'm grabbing this and move it up the z-axis to around here. Okay. Oops, here we are. Here we are. Okay, so <clears throat> now I could replicate this leg four times and then adjust it and spend a lot of time aligning it but there's actually a much simpler way to do this i can use a modifier so you click on this modifier properties on the right hand side and then we can add a modifier there is a mirror modifier the mirror modifier mirrors an object along different axes among other things so we can choose this axis along along which we want it to be mirrored and right now nothing happens because we haven't applied our previous transformations. We had some scaling and we had some grabbing and so on. So uh, I'm pressing Control and A and I apply all my transformations. And once I do that, I can actually see it has been mirrored already on the x-axis and I also want to mirror on the y-axis. And then I can see that I have four different poles in exactly the same positions. I can check on that quickly uh, it looks good. Okay, this is our geometry. So uh, when we go into our render view, we will see a very dark and grim scene because we don't have any lights. So I want to add some lights and I add lights like I add meshes. Uh, we have our mesh menu here, but down here we also have a light menu. We have four different types of lights. We add an area light and I can uh, grab that Maybe I'll move that here and I rotate this to give it 
a nice angle and make sure that you have your light pointing towards the object by moving that up and scaling that a little bit. Maybe I'll move it a bit closer. And you can already see there is a bit of a very light, dim illumination going on here now. You can go to the light menu. That's uh, the properties menu that we have available when we are dealing, when we are, you know, light object is selected. And you can see there is a white color and it's 10 watt in power, which is far too low. We had to change that to, let's say, 100, 200. This is something you can play with. Seems a bit too much, maybe 150. Yeah, maybe 120. Okay, so we have a light. I want to have a second light, so I duplicate that and I move that along the y-axis. I rotate that along the z-axis by 180. So it points from exactly the other side, or not exactly, but um, moving it a bit closer here. So it's kind of in between these two and I can see it now, but it is completely white. So we want to change that. <clears throat> Every object has a materials submenu. So we can see here these menus, they change based on what you have selected. And I have light selected, I have a light menu here. And I have an object selected, then I have a materials option here. And this is this ball with this checkerboard printed on it. That we see here and when we click on it we see there is no material so we can add a new material by clicking on new and then i have a material 001 i call that a shelf and actually i can already use the time and rename this into shelf one and shelf two and shelf three and shelf four I can type shelf four, and this is my this is a poem. and this is we leave the area lights here for a moment. I also want to create a new collection and call the collection shelf, and then move all these things inside. So this is always a good thing to organize your scene a little bit, so you have everything together. So now when I click on shelf, I have this lower shelf, for example. I think we had this one selected first. I have this shelf. I can now change this material. I have this basic node. It's called principled BSDF node. We don't need to worry about what that is. But it, we know that there is a base color in it. We can click on this base color and pick some light brown color. And that looks good. So. Uh, I don't want to change anything for it. I want to now use the same material for all of my other shelves. So I'm just clicking on this little icon here and then pick shelf, each one of them. And then I have a shelf of some that looks a lot better. So now I'm selecting my and then I want to create a new material for that as well. And I call that pole. <clears throat> I pick um, a kind of a light gray color for that. I select a roughness that is very low, something like 0.1. Also click here and just type. And then I pick uh, a very metallic look, let's say a 0.8. Maybe I want to make this a little bit lighter, maybe very light gray or almost white. And now I can kind of see that it is reflecting <clears throat> a little bit. So one more thing I want to do is I want to change the render engine from Ivy. That's the one we have currently selected to cycles, which is a real time, it's a real time render, and it has a much better result. So when you now look at and now my computer starts, the fan starts shooting off. So I can see here there is some reflection going on. It's a lot more detailed. 
and we can see actually parts of the shelf color being reflected in this pole that holds it together. That creates a very nice look. Every time I'm scaling and moving it around, it recalculates. Okay, that is all for today. We made a shelf in just under 15 minutes, I believe. Um, just under 11 minutes, actually. And I hope you enjoyed it, and I see you soon.